Violinist Stefan Jacu has been a featured soloist with conductor Jed Galen and the Bay Atlantic Symphony eight times over the past 20 years. He was still a freshman at Harvard when he first played Prokofiev's Violin Concerto No. 2 with the orchestra. Stefan Jacquiv is, I think, one of the world's great violinists. He's an incredibly passionate musician and um, thoughtful, you know. Uh, he's one who really combines mind and heart and technique to burn. He's a great collaborator. So I, I kind of moved this along coming into it, and then we even notched it up more. But hmm. do you want to go still faster? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I would love it if we just set it by, by what happens here. So then, it's not a sudden cut yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, is that okay? Let's do that. Okay. Everything is yes and, and, and what might we do differently and how, and, and what do you think about it, and he's open to it. I think maybe I pushed it this time, that, right at 38 I'm talking about. In 2022, Stefan returned to Stockton University's Performing Arts Center to tackle Benjamin Britten's concerto. Benjamin Britten is an English composer, um, as his name would suggest, not spelled the same. Um, and he comes on the heels of some of his English patriots, um, Rafe on Williams especially. And Britain is more of an internationalist who is still something of a nationalist at the same time. The Britain Violin Concerto was written in 1938 and 1939, and it is a piece that reflects its time. Britain was a pacifist, and this piece is both kind of his reaction to the horrors of the Spanish Civil War, as well as the looming strife in Europe. And it's a piece that is mournful, I'd say blisteringly virtuosic, cathartic, wailing, and just deeply affecting both to listen to and to play. It opens itself up to pretty much and, and demands all kinds of techniques from uh, harmonics, these whistle sounds, you know, that, that they've played, you know, playing uh, pizzicato with the left hand while he's bowing, many double stops and quadruple stops when, you know, he's playing four notes at once, bristlingly fast passages to really sustained passages over full orchestra. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's fiendish. Britain wrote this piece in 1938-39. The Spanish Civil War was raging. Um, Britain was horrified by war. And of course, he felt the winds of war kicking up again uh, throughout Europe. The piece was completed exactly one month before Hitler invaded Poland. And so the piece deals with premonitions, it's got sublimely beautiful moments. It's got some fierce moments. But the end, I think, is, is one of the things that, it, it's one of the most shimmeringly ambiguous ends. It, it, it's, is it major, is it minor? There's these beautiful trombone chorale chords that sound almost Renaissance. And then the violin is ruminating on those with a kind of passion that at times feels very vulnerable, at times feels very angular, and at times feels um, hopeful. And, and he leaves you right on the edge. There's a trill that takes you right between major, minor, and, and it just leaves you like, who knows what's gonna happen. And so I think it's a piece that speaks to our time very much. Um, because I think we feel, and certainly in Ukraine, I think everyone feels like, like uh, where are we gonna end up? And uh, it's great to have art that allows us to express not only the joys of humanity, but the worries that we have, the strivings that we have, all those things. 